call a QSM unit. That QSM unit is used to program uh, RF units or RF switches, which are radio frequency. Lutron has their own own frequency that they use. Uh, they've had that patent, so nobody else can use it. Now, when you use the hardwired system, which this here is hardwired in, the QSM is hardwired into the unit, and so are your switches. As soon as you connect the power to it, your unit will already pick up anything that is already hardwired. So, since that saying that, as soon as you push that button, because it's already programmed in, the light is on zone 4, so is the switch, it will come on. We can program the switch to do other lights too if we want to, but we're not going to do that today. It's not part of our lab. We're going to show you how to program the RF unit. So we'll turn that one off, and we will start by, this is already controlled into it. We have to uh, program the remote into the QSM unit, and then program the uh, RF switch into the panel itself. So this is how you program the RF switch into this QSM unit. First of all, you press the program button. You see it there. Hold it until you hear a beep. Then you go to your remote. You push your off button until you hear three beeps. Now you have to take it out of program mode, so you press the program button again on your QSM until you hear a beep. Now it's exited. Now we need to program our switch to which zone we want it to in the panel. And we're, we can do multiple zones. We can do more than one. So first of all, we start by, these are your zones here. One, two, three, and four. Now first of all, you go to your, your uh, RF button. You press the on and off button simultaneously until you hear a beep. Okay, so as you can see, our QSM mode did not come on, the light, when I tried to wire, uh, I tried to put my um, remote into the panel. So what I have to do now is I have to go to the to the QSM unit and program it to the panel first before I can program the switch. And how you do that is take it out of the program mode for the switch. You can see it's back on wired. So now what I have to do is push program on the QSM until you hear the beep. Then I push the input so it goes to QSM. Okay, QSM is now on. Now I unprogram, push the unprogram button on the QSM again. Okay, so now I should be able to use my switch to program into the unit. So I push both buttons again, and you can see the QSM button has come, or light has come on and it's flashing. Now we set the option, and it's on option three. We'll set it to default. Okay, you see it flash on default. Now I will hold the button until that default button stays on. Okay. Now what you do is find out which zone you want this RF switch to go on. We're going to make it a couple different zones. We're first going to hit the zone 3 by hitting both buttons at the same time. And we're going to hit zone 1 and hit both buttons at the same time, the off and on. Now that I know which zones I want to come on, I can go back to the unit, the switch, push the off and on button again until you hear the beep. And now this switch should turn on zone 1 and zone 3. This light is zone 1, this one is zone 3. So they should both come on at once when I push the on button. 
So now it's programmed for that. And that will turn it off. And now you've got your, your other wired switch that you did before that turns on zone 4. And this switch here should turn on uh, 1 and 3. Thanks, Randy. We're going to talk a little bit about how exactly we're going to wire up today's lab based on the programming that Randy spoke about. You'll find one of these units, the Lutron Energy Saver node, located between two cubicles. That means each unit has a capability of having four students working on it. So two students from this cubicle and two students from this cubicle will be bringing the wires to this unit. The actual 120 volt connections will happen in this box up here. You see it has black and white wires, so you have your neutral and your black, and you have basically four lines or four loads that this unit can handle. So there's one line here or one load here, another load here on the black and white, a third load on the other black and white, and a fourth load on the other black and white. The black and white on the far left is the actual feed that goes into the panel that feeds the unit. I've removed the safety guard to indicate where we actually feed this uh, main panel. As you can see it has one place where it feeds the line and then from here we be able to we have jumpered each one of the loads so that basically one feed will feed all the lights for our lab. This has been done to uh, reduce the amount of connections we need, but in the real world you can bring individual circuits to each one of these screws. So you would bring a circuit into here from one breaker, a second breaker, third breaker, fourth breaker and then the screw the loads will go out on the other side. As you can see this wire goes up and it gets connected to the blacks. We have redded all the neutrals together so all the neutrals are all connected into one spot. But to simplify our lab we're bringing in only one circuit and basically parallel connections to all of them because we do not have a large amount of load for our labs. So you were bringing two pieces of wire to this panel from your cubicle. You'll bring the wire that goes to your light and make a connection, bring it into your plastic connector so you are familiar from last intake and make your connections to the black and white. Pick up the ground, obviously. The other wire you'll be bringing here will be the low voltage connection that will be connected to three wires. Now you'll notice that we have different color wires here. We have blue and black and red and black on this side. This is to indicate the difference between the multiple zones that Randy spoke about in the previous part of the video. Each one of these wires is connected to a particular type of connection on the panel. I removed some of the wires so you can see where the wires are connected. The first wire is connected to something called 20 volts and then it's connected to IR and then common. So basically as you can see where the black are the first, fourth and sixth connection. So we're not using OCC with the occupy sensor or daylight sensor or switch. We are just using the 20, IR and common. If you look at the hardwire switch you'll be using which is this one here, it has three wires on it. And you'll notice if we were to look at it that the red is 20, the black is common, and your white is your single. If you follow our wires, 
they are hooked up one, two, three, and one, two, three is the same connection down in this area here. So that means that would be your 20, that would be your IR, and that would be your common. Same goes for black, that would be your 20, that would be your IR, and that would be your common. So keep that in mind that they are in order, hooked up down below, the same way they are hooked up up above. The wire you'll be using to hook up your low voltage switch will be 18-3 wire. Very similar to what we use for doorbell, but this one has three conductors, a red, a black, and a white. You'll also need morets to make the connection between the wires and your switch. You should be using the smallest wire connectors you have. As you can see, we have a large, good for number 12 and larger. We have the 14 gauge wire, uh, wire connectors we usually use. But you should try using these orange ones that are made for smaller gauges such as this 18-3 wire to make your connections between the wire and the switches. In the shop, we are using currently the orange ones. Each student will work in their own cubicle. They will place a low voltage switch in a switch box mounted at 52 inches, just like we learned in last intake for regular switches. And you'll also need a round box for a light. So you will need a keyless, a light bulb. The 14-2 will go from the light bulb to the unit on the back of this plywood. If you're working in other cubicles, you may need to go from your light all the way across and come along stapling your wire to go to your control panel. So in total we will have four 14 twos coming from two cubicles back to our panel. The low voltage wire from our switch will also go from the switch box to your panel in the lower section that we pointed out before for low voltage connection. So from here, you will run it to the boxes on the bottom of the panel, and from your light switches, you will run it to the box on the top of the panel. So if we were to come around, this is where your 14.2 will go for the light, and this is where your 18.3 low voltage wire will come for the hard wire switches. Okay, let's go over where we're going to run the wires. We're going to use 18.3 gauge wire from uh, sorry, one of the switch boxes mounted at 52 inches. Um, we are running the wire inside a box. Since this is low voltage wire, technically according to code, you really do not need a box. You can use a plaster ring uh, or you can just fasten it to the drywall making a hole. So that's the advantage, another advantage of low voltage wiring. The code book does not require for you to need to have a box. Uh, but we are going to use one for the lab, so we have it in the box, we've stripped some wires back, and we run it down across our studs. Still going to need your staples if it's a new installation to keep it from being damaged when coming in front and being screwed by drywall screws, so you still need your staples. Come across through the studs, and you're going to bring your wire into this section here, and wire your three wires into there. You're also going to do your 120 volts, so basically here you do need a box, this is for your light. The connection is from here going across and up and into the 4x4, 4x11 16th box up top through your grounds. And I'm going to hook up my black and my white to my far right. Your partner will hook up to the next one and so on and so on until you have four students using this, this unit here. Okay? If this was a real life situation, you would most likely send the power down the white wire back at the round octagon box where the keyless is and when the wire comes into this panel you would hook up the white wire to one of the terminations here let's say the left screw and then when the relay closes it would return back on the black wire which is connected to the right screw same way that you did in lab in the first semester using a switch see I've hooked up the 14 18 3 wire to the actual leads of the hard wire switch from Lutron and as I mentioned before we said that the red is 20 black is common and white is the R IR single or basically your your infrared single 
So the same connections have to be made to your panel. And as I mentioned, the first one will be your 20, first black wire in this case. The second black wire will be your IR, and the last one is your common. Because this takes it up to the board that has 20, IR, common. And that is repeated for all three loads. You don't have to strip very much. You just need a little bit, a little mount there, a quarter inch, any longer, and then you'll have the wire sticking out, and there's a possibility of shorting out to the back of the box. That same rule applies to when you're hooking up your actual 120 volts. So this wire is going back to the actual light. As you can see, the black wire has been stripped correctly. The white is a little long, and you don't want that because in case it shorts out the back of the box, you'll have it dead short. So that 120 volt that is fed from the panel comes up. When it's turned on, it goes to the black wire. It also gives it neutral, and it will go to your light that has been hooked up. So what that means is basically when you hit the switch, your light will come on as we talked about in the programming. But we also want you to program your remote control switch so that it turns on your light and your other partner's light beside you. Refer back to Randy's video on programming. As you can see, we've hooked up our three, four, uh, three wires, 18 gauge, that go to our hardwire switch. The other student will hook up to these three blue wires third student to these three black wires, and fourth student to these other three red wires. Everything will be coming up top. Due to the fact that this is a learning lab, we are not missing some of the rules where this cable comes in front of a two by four. If it was in the real world, we'll be passing all these cables through holes and inside studs, and this will be mounted inside a wall, and we wouldn't have all the external boxes. Also, our connections that are done outside here would actually be done inside the unit at the proper terminals. But once again, for learning purposes, we have extended these wires outside so that we can remove, install, and remove, and install again. Once you've wired up all your wires and the rest of your partners have done the same, we are basically ready to power up the unit so that the students can start programming their individual zones. So once you, all four of you have completed your wiring, call the instructor over and we will power up the unit for you and you can start programming. Quick reminder to everybody that once you're done you're supposed to remove all the wires that you installed. Uh, do not back out all the screws completely, just loose enough, loose enough that you can remove the wires and remove all your 18.3 and your 14.2 wires from the top of the boxes and the bottom. To fasten and unfasten these wires, you should be using a small terminal driver. Anyone caught using anything bigger than this will be deducted marks. This is the proper tool for the proper job. Good luck.